and a very good day to you. Welcome to the celebration of the Holy Eucharist. My name is Father Joseph Campo. I'm the rector of St. John's Episcopal Parish in South Salem, New York. So whether you were a member of St. John's Parish or of St. Paul's Chapel in Vista or St. Andrew's in Hartsdale, I understand there are members who are worshiping with us from there, or friends of mine and from Canada and from England who have also joined in this celebration, and wherever you are, welcome. And I hope these uh, online liturgies will be an experience of prayer, uh, of your being spiritually fed, and an opportunity to be in the presence of God wherever you are, even if you cannot be in a house of worship for the next several weeks as we work our way through this epidemic. I want to also let you know that on Wednesday evenings, uh, we have a conference call and a telephone evening prayer that we have set up. And if you're interested in that, um, I invite you to go to our website or go to the parish email information that you'll be given, and you can uh, follow along there. And um, just to let you know, we have been helping out the Katona Food Pantry over the course of these weeks. We have food bought by our parishioners, and they place it in the outside bin that is available 24-7 to anyone in need of food. And when, uh, what I do is I bring extra food down to the Katona Pantry on a regular basis, um, but there's always some food available for those in need. So please feel free to make use of this if you need to. Finally, I'd love to know who you are, especially if you're visiting, uh, so to speak, um, and searching. If you're not a member of this particular parish, contact our parish by email. Let us know who you are. Let us know how we can better serve you, what you're looking for in terms of being spiritually fed at this time. Thank you, God bless you, and welcome to our liturgy.
Good morning, everyone. It's Sunday morning. It's June 7th. This is the Sunday throughout most of the Christian church. We celebrate the Feast of the Holy Trinity, where we celebrate our understanding, our feeble attempt at understanding who God is. And in a world that so desperately needs to hear of God and of a God who is with us, this is more than just an academic exercise. So please join with me in prayer. As we pray for our world, we pray for our nation, we pray for justice, we pray for the end of bigotry, we pray for ourselves, we pray for repentance and forgiveness, and we pray for healing. For those of you who have a book of common prayer, we begin on page 355. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be his kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires are known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, Amen. And the Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you have given to us your servant grace by the confession of a true faith to acknowledge the glory of the eternal Trinity and in the power of your divine majesty to worship the unity. Keep us steadfast in this faith and worship and bring us at last to see you in your one and eternal glory, O Father, who with the Son and the Holy Spirit live and reign one God forever and ever. Amen. Let us proceed now to the liturgy of the Word. book of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and to the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. And God said, Let there be a dome in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome, and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome. And it was so. God called the dome sky, and there was evening, and there was morning, the second day. And God said, Let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good, and there was evening and there was morning, the third day. And God said, Let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons, and for days and years, and let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night, and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, 
to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning the fourth day. And God said, let the waters spring forth swarms of living creatures and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves of every kind with which the waters swarm and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them saying, be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters in the seeds, and let the birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things, and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind, and the cattle of every kind and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the wild animals of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, See, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of the earth and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth and to every bird of the air and to everything that creeps upon the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. And God saw everything that he had made. And indeed, it was very good. And there was evening and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all their multitude. And on the seventh day, God finished the work that he had done. And he rested on the seventh day from all the work that, had, that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on it God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In response to this first reading, very simply pray with me. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Put things in order, listen to my appeal. Agree with one another, live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And the gospel this morning is taken from the gospel of St. Matthew. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father 
and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the ends of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. As you all know, this service is recorded earlier during the week. And right now my heart is so heavy because normally on Trinity Sunday, I would be making some sort of allusion to a happier time. I'd be making reference to things that have happened in the past, things that have humbled me, because to be quite honest, anyone who dares to believe he's going to preach and explain the mystery of the Trinity, such arrogance, such hubris, I would hope you would flee out of the church if you think you're going to hear anyone or anything that, that will explain the person of God, to human satisfaction anyway. And of course, part of the problem is also that this feast has, it has the sense of a theological lecture. Um, the doctrine of the Trinity has been tossed into the spiritual dustbins of history, something that's irrelevant. We're dealing with so many problems in life now to try to think that we have to stop and figure out how, what it means that God is Father, God is Son, God is Holy Spirit. Wasn't it just a bunch of very smart bishops a long time ago, centuries ago, who tried to take the categories of philosophy and use them to explain something very, very simple and turn it into something unbearably complex? I remember my professor who taught the course on the Trinity. I come from an older generation that had to take a course that was entitled in English, God, who is one and who is three, De Deo Uno et Trino. And I remember pulling the oral exam and having to explain to him some theory that St. Augustine had written about explaining the mystery of God and comparing it to some theologian that I knew our professor did not like. So I kind of played on his bigotry about this particular professor, shame on me, um, and, and basically gave him what he wanted to hear, or at least I thought I was doing that, and I was very smug and arrogant, and I was explaining the mystery of God to everyone's satisfaction, especially my own, and then I was walking out at the end of our 10-minute session where I knew I had passed the exam. He turned and he said to me, oh, by the way, just for, for 30 seconds, could you take everything that you explained about God and pretend I'm a, a, a second grader, and would you please explain it to me as if I were an eight-year-old? And he just turned me into a puddle of mush because, of course, he knew exactly what I had been doing and he knew what I knew and he knew what I didn't know and I knew what I knew and didn't know. And what I don't know is how to take our understanding of the mystery of God and make it applicable in a world that not only does not want to hear about God but turns its back on God, it's closed its ears, it's closed its heart, it's closed its mind. And we see the result. We see the result in such hatred, hatred that causes anger, and anger that causes hatred in an unending spiral that never ends. We proclaim as Christians the fullness of God, and we proclaim the fullness of God to the entire world. Jesus, at the end of his mission, sends his followers out. He says, you don't stay in an upper room, you don't stay locked in a church. You go out to people and bring them into a relationship with God, God who is Father, who is Son, and who is Spirit. You know, very often we think of our faith in terms of a vertical relationship. It's me and God. Or, at best, maybe I come to church when I come to church and I'm with those other people that I sometimes agree with and sometimes don't. And I pray with them sometimes or I tolerate them sometimes. And our faith is something that we as a parish share or don't. And at the very, very most, we think of our parish as part of something larger called a diocese or a, or whatever, different church traditions have different names for the larger collection of smaller communities. And I think we forget the fact that Christianity is a worldwide movement. It is the Jesus movement, as our presiding bishop often reminds us. We're part of something so much bigger than ourselves. We're part of something which is called the Church, which is one holy, Catholic, and apostolic. And we proclaim the fullness of God. Not just when we say the Our Father and mention the Father's name, or we mention the name of Jesus in our prayers, or teach our children how to pray, or even on Pentecost, or when the bishop shows up for confirmation, think about the Holy Spirit. 
we proclaim the fullness of God to the entire world, which is a reminder that God, who is the creator of us, the Savior who redeemed us, and the Spirit who sanctifies and gives us holiness, sets us apart, that God has enlivened us so that we may bring the love that is God, because God is a relationship of love, into the human community. Because God is community, we are united to that community who is God, and we are called to be united to each other. We are called to live lives as Christians in terms of a Trinitarian understanding of life. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Words of St. Paul read so beautifully by Patrick, the complete focus on who God is. And you know what? All of the social theory and all of the revisions and all of the attempts to fix society all have to begin with living as community the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. We live that life, as simple as that sounds. We live in peace with each other. And none of the events, none of the causes, none of the bigotry that instigates and all of the excuses that can be used for tearing us apart, none of that would exist if we lived the Trinitarian life. Knowing I am graced by the Father, loved by the Father, graced by the Son, and in union with the Spirit, and in union with each one of you. Our belief in God as Trinity is a reminder that God himself lived among us and yet was different from us. That Jesus, who was truly human and truly was God. That Christ, who was united with and distinguished from the Father, united with and distinguished from the Spirit, united with and distinguished from us, who draws us into a communal love experience. And if we live that, and we treated each other with that kind of respect and love, this world would be so much different. Because we forget that being a Christian is being part of a mission, that we've been sent right now in the cocoons of our homes, dealing with the virus and dealing with the fact that we're supposed to stay apart from each other, we especially forget the fact that that is only a temporary situation. Be a united with each other in love in the homes where you are now, but God, please take that love into the community when you are able to do so, as rapidly as we are able to do so. Because the God who is Trinity, the God who is our creator, as we heard read so beautifully, the God who is our redeemer and the God who is our sustainer sends us out to transform the sin and the garbage that has become the human condition. Trinity Sunday is not a philosophical theory. A theologian once said, the difference between philosophy and theology is philosophy of religion, you can deal with theory. The minute you start theologizing, you are talking about how you live. So let me ask you, in the name of the Trinity, who has brought you into being, who has redeemed you and who has sustained you, how do you live? And how will you bring the love of Christ into a broken world? Amen. In the year 325, during the reign of the Emperor Constantine, because the church was fractured and fighting amongst itself and trying to come to grips with an understanding of God, many bishops of the church gathered together and they penned what we believe. And we utter their prayer. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth and of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. 
He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. I'll now ask another member of our congregation to please lead us in the prayers of the people. many weeks, we pray for those who are related to our parish, those who are working in the face of this virus. Daniel Reardon, Elise Brandt, Kelly Ross, Marjorie Jean Michelle, Nerissa Joyner, Valerie Skrelia, Christopher Skayen, Elena Aristede, Ellie Levitt, Aaron Levitt, John Lafata, Barbara Thompson, Kristen Smith, Kimberly Bruin, Caitlin Bruin, Chris Konechi, Kyler Tompkins, Jackson Shavats, Paul DeMore, Christopher Beckett, Maya Bissonette, Brittany Jordan. We pray not only for peace in our country, but for justice in this country, for everyone equal under the law, to know that lives do matter. Black lives matter. All our lives matter. We pray for peace in our world. We pray for an end to this pandemic. Let us pray. God of all power and love, we give thanks for your unfailing presence and the hope you provide us in times of uncertainty and loss. Send your Holy Spirit to enkindle in us your holy fire. Revive us to live as Christ's body in the world, a people who pray, worship, learn, break bread, share life, heal neighbors, bear good news, seek justice, rest and grow in the spirit. Wherever and however we gather, unite us in common prayer, send us in common mission, that we and the whole creation may be restored and renewed through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with each of you.
We continue now with the liturgy of the table. Let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself as an offering and a sacrifice to God. For those of you who have a Book of Common Prayer, Eucharistic Prayer A begins on page 361. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For with your co-eternal Son and Holy Spirit, you are one God, one Lord, a trinity of persons and in unity of being. And we celebrate the one and equal glory of you, O Father, and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and the whole company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you and your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross. He offered himself, in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And we celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer to you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And on the last day, Bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ. By him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And together we pray as Jesus himself taught us how. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance Christ died for you and feed on him in your heart by faith with thanksgiving.
For our final prayer, I would once again like to pray the opening collect to make this sort of the bookend theme as we honor God who is Father, Son, and Spirit. So if you have the insert that was emailed to you earlier this week, please pray the collect with me. Almighty and everlasting God, you have given to us your servant's grace by the confession of a true faith to acknowledge the glory of the eternal Trinity and in the power of your divine majesty to worship the unity. Keep us steadfast in this faith and worship and bring us at last to see you in your one and eternal glory, O Father, who with the Son and the Holy Spirit live and reign, one God, forever and ever. Amen. May the Lord bless and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. May the God, the Holy Trinity, make you strong in faith and love, defend you on every side, guide you in all truth and peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, come down upon you and remain with you forever. Go in peace. Thanks be to God.